Hello, brothers and sisters. Welcome to another time of Bible teaching. Um, if you haven't figured out yet, I believe the rapture is going to happen in 2024 on Rosh Hashanah. The math is there. Looking at scripture, looking at the different, um, how do I word this? Looking at the different criteria that we find through scripture. It appears that it's the only year it could be. And this is not the purpose of this video. I just did a three part series about that. Uh, check it out. It's interesting. You need to read them in order for a second, third. Obviously, nobody does it. Very few people went to the third. The second has tons of views. Well, you know, it's hard. You can't put it all together in one video and make it make sense. So that's what I did. Uh, but part of that is understanding that Rosh Hashanah is the only day that the rapture can happen on. And I know to some people this is blasphemy, but the doctrine of eminency. But the doctrine of eminency is not in scripture. Um, Messiah has appointed times. They are the appointed times of the Lord. Some people mistakenly call them the Jewish feast days. There is nothing Jewish about them. Leviticus 23 is prophecy. It's kind of like the table of contents to prophecy. Because the first four feast days, Messiah was crucified on Passover. Um, his body was in the grave during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. He arose on the Feast of First Fruits, and the Holy Spirit came down on Shava Oats. Was any of that a coincidence? He happened to have those events happen on those days. No, my God does not do coincidences. He tells you ahead of time what he's going to do, Amos 3, 7. Um, he will fulfill the fall feast days, and that starts with Rosh Hashanah. This is actually part five in a series, and I have a playlist that I've set up on my YouTube channel. I may go back and just put the different parts in the notes or in the comments on this to make it helpful to you. We started with just a general overview, and then we looked at repentance. And repentance is, oh my goodness, it is so connected into Rosh Hashanah. We looked at it being the new year or the head of the year. And last, last, the last video, we looked at it being the coronation of the king. And I, I apologize, I've gotten away. It's been weeks since I've done one of these. But um, this one's going to be really, really cool. All right? Get your Bibles open. Let's get started. Um, let me do this. And pull over. Oh, I'm sorry. Give me a second here. See what that does for us. Okay. But what I want to start is by explaining to you that Rosh Hashanah is the Tekia Gedalia, T E K I A H G E D O L A H. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time focusing on this, but you can go to YouTube and just put in the last trump, Tekia Gedalia, write it down. And um, that actually means last trump. Let me think about this. The last trump. I've heard that somewhere. We'll talk about it. Rosh Hashanah has 100 blows of the Shafar on that day. If you keep going down here, over and over, it's a feast of trumpets, blast. Um, you'll see that. And a lot, of, a lot of people believe that when Paul said the last trumpet in 1 Corinthians, let's go there real quick, see if this works. Yeah. This one's not working too well. Anyhow, we'll do it like this. Quick navigation. I'll get this a little better when we really get into the video. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15.52. This is a verse that you guys know. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall uh, sound, and the dead shall be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Hmm, interesting. At the last trump. That's the Tekiah, the Dahlia, and I always mispronounce that. It's blown on Rosh Hashanah. Paul told us the day. He actually told us the hour, too, because a twinkling of a night is an idiom. 
for Rosh Hashanah. It's when two stars of medium strength are visible. Google it. Search it out. Look at it. There's another thing. This trumpet on Rosh Hashanah, this last trumpet, is also known as the Awakening Blast. Okay? And again, you can research this. Rosh Hashanah, the Awakening Blast. I particularly prefer Facebook. And you can see Awaken to Judgment, Hebrew for Christians. I prefer websites like that. A lot of times I'll find this like in my Jewish eyes. Oh, I didn't want to actually go there. Or Jewish websites, my Jewish learning. And read through them. And that's actually pretty cool. I didn't want to waste the time doing all that. I just want to let you know how you can be a Berean, how you can go about doing that. Now, what I need to do is I have this pull up. Let me do this, this. Hopefully this works. Yeah, I don't want this little thing. Give me a second. Here we go. So let's go and look at this. Okay, so we know it's the awakening blast. Uh, what does that actually mean? You'll see. We know it's the last trump. Uh, and again, go dig into it, see what you'd find. Joel 2 is pretty cool. I like Joel 2. You'll notice that, oops, how does it start? Oh, this is not working for me. Here we go. It starts off with, yeah. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, for it is at hand. That means it's here, the last thousand years. So with the rapture and tribulation. That's what day that happens on Rosh Hashanah. What are they doing? They're blowing trumpets. Rosh Hashanah is a feast of trumpets. All right. Um, we see this in Isaiah, this awakening blast, this trumpet. Go to Isaiah 26, and we're going to take this a number of places. Uh, we're going to show you, I'm going to show you the rapture in a number of places in the Old Testament and show you some really cool things. Um, you're definitely not one going to tuck, you're not, not one going to miss it. You're not going to want to tuck out early. And by the way, if you haven't done so, subscribe, go for it. It's not that hard to do. Isaiah 26, 19. Your dead shall live together with my dead body. Dead shall arrive. Okay, the dead in Christ rise first. Awake and sing, you who dwell in the trust. Uh, now, come, my people, into your chambers. Those are the bridal chambers. We've gone through this many times. You can read through the rest of it. We're, gonna, we're hidden away in the Father's house. And we're going to talk about that soon. Um, Rosh Hashanah is the day of concealment, the hidden day, the day that we're hiding away. Um, and then the Lord comes out to punish the inhabitants of the earth. But it's the awake and sin. When that when that awakening blast, that last trump, the Takiya Gadao sounds, it's going to wake the dead. At least the dead that are sleeping. Okay, and Isaiah is sitting here saying, I'm going with you. Yeah, it doesn't matter, Jew or Gentiles, who do you belong to? A lot of people get really hung up on a Jew-Gentile divide. You guys got to understand, church is grafted in. We want to be grafted in. Um, so let's go and see this in the book of Revelation. The, the rapture is in Revelation 4. After these things, behold, a door standeth open in heaven, and a voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here. There's the rapture. I know a lot of people get hung up, but that's a voice. That's not a trumpet. Actually, the word is teruah. Um, and we'll, we'll come across this word again, and we'll look at it a little closer. It's a voice. It's a trumpet. It can be either. Okay? So this is your trumpet, where they're, where they're being called up. And then what do they do once they get there? Let's go to Revelation 5. Understand that Revelation 
Uh, two and three of the church age. So Revelation 4 starts with after these things, after the church age. Revelation 4 and 5, you're getting a tour around in heaven. Okay. And then Revelation 6 starts with the seal judgment. So you're seeing what's going on in heaven, what's going on in earth. So let's look over in Revelation 5. at verse 19 and what are we doing when we get there i know somebody out there oh i know 519 it doesn't exist maybe it's nine yep and they sang a new song saying you are worthy to take the scroll to open its seal for you were slain and have redeemed us to god by your blood out of every tribe every tongue and every people and every and nation how is this not the raptured saints in heaven. Take a look at it. It is the raptured saints in heaven, out of every tribe, Israel, and tongue, and people, and nation, the whole world. Yeah, tribes are Israel. Yeah, the lots of people are going to come out of Israel, believe it or not. They redeemed us to God by your blood. This is the rapture. It's not in Revelation 12. It's right here, long before Revelation 12. I just did a video recently about birth pains. Check it out if you have an issue with what I just said about Revelation 12. All right, so this awakening blast. This is, is this cool? When we see these things go together, see the Old Testament merge with the New Testament. See, I don't understand. Revelation is a book of apocalyptic literature. It draws, it's a roadmap to the end, but it draws on everything from the Old Testament to bring, to give you the understanding of it. Um, one, two, three. Let's go to Daniel 12. I just want to keep some themes here going and see how it works out. Um, there it is. Chapter 1. And I'm in the wrong place. That's Daniel 1, not chapter 1. Chapter 12, my apologies. Verse. Um, at that time, excuse me, I'm about to sneeze. I knew it was coming. And thank you for everybody out there who said, God bless you. At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the people, your sons, your people. Revelation 12, which when Michael fights, they don't fight until Israel says, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is a mid-tribulation, not rapture, but a mid-tribulation event. And there shall be a time of trouble, Jacob's trouble, such as never was since was a nation. Uh, these words Messiah mentioned in Matthew 24 specifically about the great tribulation. Um, even to that time, at that time, your people, Daniels, shall be delivered. Everyone found written in the book of the life. Uh, the book, that's the book of life. It's been around for a long time. And many of those who sleep in the dust, oh, we just read that, awaking out of the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life and some to everlasting uh, contempt. I always wondered, this verse drove me nuts many years ago. When does the people arise to everlasting life and to everlasting shame and contempt at the same time? Never. You do not see it anywhere in Scripture. It doesn't tell you that it's going to happen at the same time here. It doesn't. Anyhow. Um, if it doesn't say it, don't assume it. You've got to have, be able to put things together to assume something or to make it, make correlations. So, here we see, an awake, what's going to, how are they going to awake? There's going to be an awakening blast. Let's go to, we've got a number of places to get it to. Let's go to Psalm 33. Nope. Psalm 33, 1 through 3 is what I have written down. Rejoice, O righteous, O you righteous. Praise for praise from the upright is beautiful. Praise him with the heart. Make melody to him with stringed instrument with, with an instrument of ten strings. Praise him. Sing to him a new song. 
play skillfully with a shout of joy. Okay, so you're singing him a new song, and we'll find that word new song throughout scripture. How can I tie this to the rapture? See that shout of joy? Let's look at that a little closer. That word joy. The loud noise. Here, what is that word? The ruah. This is our could be our last trump. And we're going to see this again. An alarm signal, sound of a tempest, shout, blast, blast of war, or an army, or a joy. It is a blast. It is a blowing of the shofar. Is it can be either. So, but it's sometimes it's translated as joy. I'm going to always oh, that. <laughs> Sorry, I got something in here. Yeah, I got a little bit left. But think about this. If we're alive or if we're dead, when that last trump sounds, oh, is that going to be a joyous, joyous sound to our ears? Yes, I believe it is. Let's go. Um, thing in the book of Psalms, let's go to Psalm 17. Don't go anywhere. When we get to Psalm 27, you're going to want to be there. Oh, my goodness. That's my favorite scriptures of the rapture. Anywhere in the Bible is Psalm 27. Yes, Psalm 27 is the rapture. Psalm 17, verse 8. This is really cool, reading this, all of Psalm 17. Keep me in the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. Okay, a couple things here. Um, we're going to be doing a video. I don't know if it's going to be part six or seven about Rosh Hashanah being the day of concealment, the hidden day. Um, so when you see hide me, we're hidden away. We saw that in Isaiah 26. Hide me under the shadow. Shadow represents protection of your wings. You remember, the, I just did a video. I don't think a lot of people watched it. It's talked about um, prophecy. There's like healing and um, in prophecy. And it was based on Zechariah 23, I think, the last verse in Zechariah 8. It says that 10 men, and in, in those days, so it's not the last day, it starts before that. That's so what's going on now. 10 men will grab the sleeve of a Jewish man saying, let us go with you, for we heard the Lord is with you. That word sleeve is not sleeve like this. It's knot. It's the edge of a garment, the corners of a garment. And what they would tie there is the zitzi. The zitzi has 613 twists and turns in it with a blue thread, thread Christ going through it. And it represents for the law. Okay? So here, the words we want to look at, are um, under your shadow, and see the shadow is protection. Right here, you'll see that. It's about protection. Yeah, it's shade, but it's also protection. The other word we want to look at is of thy wings. That word there, wings, extremity, um, border, corner, this corner of a garment. That's where the zitzi would be found. Think about um, in Malachi, it says that his word talks about him being the sun, S-U-N, of righteousness, and that healing will be in his wings. That's the not the corner of a garment, the Torah, the zitzi, the Torah. And that's where you get like, um, I long to cover you. Like with the wings, like a chicken, but or does, or but then also think about the woman who had bleeding for 12 years who snuck up to t touch the corner of his garment. It's all connected, and it's important to understand this. Um, so let's go back and look at this verse one more time. And Keep me in the shadow, in the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. 
Well, I need to, I, just because it says, hide me in the shadow of your wings. How do I know this is the end of times, the last days? Well, look at this last verse here. As for me, I will see your face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake in your righteousness. And when if you know we passed away, and I guess David knew he was not going to live to see this event, that he is going to awake in his likeness. Now we're going to go to Psalm 91, verse 1. I only have a couple more verses, but we're going to spend some time on Psalm 27. Um, Psalm 91, verse 1. I have to keep telling myself I'll forget. Come on. I don't know why it's says slow today. He who, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So what's the secret place? All right. And this is what's going to tie us in. We, so we have the shadow, the time that we're hidden, and we know, you know we're hidden away in the shadow, and we have the shadow here under the shadow of the Almighty, but the secret place, okay? The secret place, figuratively, or literally on earth, would be when a, a man takes the prayer shawl that's around his shoulders and he lifts it up over his head and he brings it down and it's a one-on-one -on -one time with God. Okay, this is the prayer closet. They didn't have closets in their rooms back then. This is that one-on-one -on -one time with God and it's a picture of us being up in heaven. This prayer shawl, it's also a picture of section because a man would take this and put it over his wife as a picture of protection i know i'm making all these broad um, motions with my hands and you probably can't see it sorry it is what it is so with that said um okay so we need to see this somewhere else don't we and that's where we're going to go to um, but this is a picture of us being in a wedding chamber in heaven, like we saw in Isaiah 26. So now let's go to Psalm 27. We'll go through here to hit all the verses. Yep. Psalm 27. Uh, I'm going to do something real quick. I don't know if I'm going to mess everything up. We have two networks in the house, and I realized that this was on a different one. So this is going to make it go quicker. I'll have to go back and look and make sure I didn't mess anything up on this video. I am not a tech guy. Okay, Psalm 27. A Psalm of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? Okay, so if, you, if you've got Christ in your life, you know your eternity, who are you going to be afraid of? They might be able to hurt your physical body here, but your eternity is rest assured. And did David have any reasons to be afraid? Oh my goodness, he did. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked come against me to eat up my flesh, and the enemies and foes, they stumble and fell. When army camps around me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise up against me, in this I will be confident. Ooh, this could be good. All this stuff going around, what is he being confident about? Oh, it gets better. The one thing I have desired of the Lord. You think about David, a man after God's heart. Here's the one thing that he has desired. That I will that I will seek. He's going to seek this one thing. It's not an it's a active, it's not a passive thing. He's going out to find it. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all of the days of my life, and behold the beauty of the Lord, and inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble. Time of Jacob's trouble. He shall hide me in his pavilion. That's the wedding chamber. Wait a minute. 
He's saying, David's saying he's going to get raptured. In the secret place, oh, that's a secret place, the prayer time, the, 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 you know, the prayer closet. Um, then you have the protection with the shadow. Oh, my goodness, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. Who is that rock? That rock is Messiah. Oh, it gets better. And now my head will shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. That's a promotion. This is going to be elevated. We're going to be kings and priests. And we see that here. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy. What's that word joy? Come down here. Let's find it. Sacrifices of joy. Guess what? That word joy is Teruah. When we hear that sound, oh my goodness, it is going to be a beautiful sound. All right. I'm, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to attach a video I did that's longer that goes into more depth here. I, this is one of the most beautiful passages of Scripture. There's somebody out there that's saying to themselves, wait a minute, wait a minute, stop, stop, stop. How do you know that David's in heaven? How do you know that that's that? All the days of my life, he lived, he died. He ended all the days of my life. That doesn't include eternity. Do we see that phrase, all the days of my life somewhere else? We most certainly do. And it was written by David. So that's a pretty good, you know, possibility to tell us something. Go to, oh, I have this written wrong. Give me a second. Oh, I know what I'll do. Because I have Psalm 236. I know that's wrong. So I'm just going to see if this works. Um, of my life. And see where it occurs. It's going to be in Psalm 20 something. Uh, it's all over the place. So it'd be this section, yeah. And Psalm 27, 23, 6. Here we go. You know this passage. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul and leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That's guidance. You, you know this one. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You appoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely the goodness and the mercy, your goodness and mercy, shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. By the way, in Hebrew, I don't know if it shows up here. Let me see. That word life is plural. I don't know if I can show you that here. Nah, I can't. My teacher, John1415.org, teaches that this word here is plural. So it's all the day of my life, here and forever, through eternity. But that's what Psalm 27 is talking about. Anyhow, I want to thank you guys so much for joining me. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do so. I'm going to keep doing videos until we are out of here. Sorry about that. Until we're taken out, uh, we're raptured, which I believe will be Rosh Hashanah this year. There's one thing that would possibly prevent that. Uh, uh, and I know I'm like saying like God has to follow my plan. No, 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 no. I'm just trying to discern from scripture. Go back and watch the other videos. You'll see why I'm saying that. Um, but it's a possibility that they added years 
and I've heard this, I haven't done the research, a friend of mine did, and he said it's nothing definitive, but it's a very good possibility, that during the Dark Ages, years could have been added. I don't know. Yeah, if you got questions, let me know. If there's something we can pray for you about, let me let us know. Respond. I want to hear what you got to say. God bless you. Have a great day. Take care.